What's up, old souls? This is Reed from Everyman Vintage, and welcome to Record Recommendations. Uh, you notice if you ever watch storied sounds that whenever I do a demo of an instrument on the console stereo, to my left and your right is always a record recommendation. Sometimes it's connected to the instrument that I'm demoing, other times it's not, and this is one of those times when it is. Um, I was demoing a 1972 Fender Telecaster in episode two, belonged to my good friend Bill Perk, um, and I had this record sitting on the console as my recommendation, which is Merle Haggard and the Strangers, uh, The Fight Inside of Me, I call it Live from Philadelphia because that's where it was recorded in 1970. I believe it was recorded in February of 1970 and released later that year. It's one of his more minor releases, I guess you could say. It, a lot of people say it was released primarily to capitalize on the success of things like The Fight Inside of Me um, and Oki from Muskogee. It was a way to cash in on their success, and both of those are included and they close the show. Both those tunes are highly misunderstood. Not necessarily my favorite Haggard tunes, uh, but I chose this record because it is just an incredible example of what Merle Haggard is. And I can connect to so many different facets of this record that I just had to include it uh, on the show. So, as I mentioned before, this live in Philadelphia, February of 1970, Merle Haggard's band consists of the likes of Roy Nichols on lead guitar, whose name was uh, autographed and scratched into the pit guard of the Telecaster I was demoing in episode two. Norman Hamlet's playing the steel, Bonnie Owens is singing harmony. It's just so good. And one of the ways I connect to it, as a, as a bluegrass musician, somebody whose background is in bluegrass, uh, the name Carlton Haney means something to a lot of us. Uh, Carlton Haney was a bluegrass and country music promoter um, from back in the day. In fact, he promoted the first ever uh, bluegrass festival in Fincastle, Virginia in 1965. He also promoted this show evidently and he gives the introduction at the beginning which I think is so interesting. And also another uh, bluegrass connection is Chubby Wise who was the original fiddle player in Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Boys, the part of the, uh, the particular group of individuals who defined that sound uh, in the mid and late 1940s. Chubby Wise comes out and plays fiddle on an old Bob Wills fiddle tune, or old Bob Wills tune rather called Karina Karina, which I love. We all know Haggard was a huge fan of Bob Wills and he played the fiddle himself. Uh, he also does a Jimmy Rogers tune on here, TV Blues. We know that uh, Haggard was a big fan of Jimmy Rogers and both of those are great examples of how I feel Haggard just was so rooted in the traditions of country music and um, when he wrote a song you knew it was coming uh, from a place of authenticity. You knew that it was real and that he knew um, that he was continuing the legacy that was started by some pretty um, pretty big names and some um, titan figures uh, in country music. Some other songs that are on this uh, album. I mentioned the two Patriots Patriotic songs, Fight Inside of Me and Oki from Muskogee. Um, he also does my favorite Merle Haggard tune of all time, Every Fool Has a Rainbow. It's just an autobiographical tune and to me is everything country music is about. Roy Nichols absolutely crushes the Telecaster on this one. Um, they do Steel and Corn, which is a tune that was written by Roy Nichols and Norman Hamlet. The twang is in full effect there. They kill that. Um, they do When Did Right Become Wrong. Um, they do I Take a Lot of Pride in What I Am. Today I Started Loving You Again. All these classic Merle Haggard tunes. And he also does, um, as he's famous for doing some impersonations, he impersonates the likes of Johnny Cash. Buck Owens, uh, he impersonates Hank Snow, and my personal favorite is he just does an absolutely spot on uh, take of Marty Robbins, and he is singing Devil Woman on this recording, um, and he is famous for doing that impersonation. Uh, so to me, this is such an amazing record, uh, an example of what Merle Haggard can really do. By far my favorite country music artist of all time. Um, talk about a triple threat Haggard could play. Um, Haggard was by far my favorite country music singer of all time. Just the richness and the control and the, he just, his voice just had just so much feeling and soul to it that I just, I, I am just so attracted to the sound of his voice that like the second he comes on, um, everything else stops and you have to listen to Haggard. And probably um, my favorite aspect of his artistry is his songwriting. 
Merle Haggard had a way of explaining the working man's heart that no one else uh, in the history of country music, in my opinion, has ever been able to do. His writing just exposes a deep well of feeling, experience, and soul that I just don't think any other country music songwriter has ever been able to do. Not to mention the longevity of his career from his first single being released, I believe, in 1963, all the way up through the 80s. He was still topping charts and just writing relevant and amazing songs. And so I chose the fight inside of me for a number of reasons. One is the connection to uh, the guitar that I was demoing in episode two, but also because I thought it'd be a good way for people who aren't super interested in Haggard's catalog to get a kind of wide swath of what he was doing at what I would consider to be the prime of his career in 1970. So if you'd like this video, I'd encourage you to uh, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to make sure you're being notified of when I release more demos, more Storytown episodes, and more record recommendation videos. Um, so I appreciate you tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.